Unit 2.3, Strain Energy. The outcome that we are focused on is to demonstrate an understanding of the stress-strain behavior of materials and the ability to extract information from the stress-strain curve. This lesson's outcome is to calculate the modulus of resilience and the modulus of toughness from the stress-strain diagram. Let's first review this concept of strain energy. Strain energy is equal to the energy stored by a material undergoing deformation due to an applied load. Strain energy density is the strain energy per unit volume of material. In the reading, you'll find the derivation for strain energy, which is given the symbol a small letter u, and is equal to one half sigma normal stress times epsilon normal strain. Now in the previous lessons we've looked at stress strain diagrams for various materials including for mild steel. And I would like to zoom in on that region of the stress strain diagram, the initial portion where linear behavior is occurring. When the stress in the steel reaches the proportional limit we can calculate the strain energy density at this point. The proportional limit on the stress strain diagram is the point at the top of the linear portion of the curve, which is right about here, that has a corresponding proportional limit stress and a proportional limit strain. When the stress in the steel reaches the proportional limit, the strain energy density can be calculated as one half times the stress at the proportional limit times the strain at the proportional limit. This is called the modulus of resilience and it is equal to the area under the stress strain curve up to the proportional limit. The modulus of resilience is the amount of strain energy a material can absorb without permanent deformation. This material property is useful for the design of products that must absorb energy without being permanently damaged. For example, shock absorbers. The units for modulus of resilience, or for strain energy density for that matter, are inch kips per cubic inch in US units, and in SI units, millijoules per cubic meter, where one joule is equal to one newton meter. Another material property that is useful in comparing materials is the modulus of toughness. It represents the area under the stress strain curve all the way up to rupture. For example, the modulus of toughness can be a useful material property when considering what materials to use in a structure that is going to be subjected to earthquake loads. In a building that is going to be subjected to an earthquake, it is important that the structure absorb a considerable amount of energy before it fails. This will allow the people that are in the building to leave before it collapses. Materials that are tough or have a large modulus of toughness would be excellent materials in this case because they could absorb the strain energy as a result of the earthquake and we're done.